Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to our Q&A video, our first Q&A video of 2022. We have some awesome topics to discuss, so let's jump right in, shall we? Starting with the first question, do you think luxury handbag collecting is becoming oversaturated? I'm new to this trend and I'm overwhelmed with how many luxury bags people have in their collection. Uh, all right, so I personally do not feel that handbag collecting is becoming oversaturated. If anything, I feel that the handbag community is actually relatively small compared to other communities either on YouTube or on Instagram. Uh, I think it's more of what I end up surrounding myself in that I end up seeing a lot more of it. So for example, um, on Instagram, yes, I follow other accounts, but I mostly do end up following uh, other handbag lovers or other people that do end up uh, collecting handbags, if you will. And uh, because I follow that, then I end up getting more, more, I guess, ads, if you will, for other people to follow when it comes to that type of content. Or even on YouTube, if I'm watching a review on this, on this bag, then I end up seeing more, uh, more, more reviews, more videos pop up of just handbags versus anything else that I'm watching on YouTube. So I think because of that, it might seem like it's a little bit more intense because in the grand scheme of things, I don't think that there are many people that really, that really get the love, that really understand the appeal when it comes to handbags or even luxury handbags in general. Because if I was to completely shut off YouTube and if I was to completely shut off Instagram, there's really no one in my everyday actual life that that cares about bags as much as I do or that has a collection or anything like that. Uh, I mean, some of my best friends, they do like luxury handbags, but not to the same extent. And definitely, um, <laughs> they think I'm crazy. They don't get it. You know, sometimes they roll their eyes or what have you. So I think that because of that, because I surround myself with other handbag lovers in those types of, uh, you know, with that type of um, platform, I think that it might seem like it's more intense. Again, these are just my two cents. This is just what I end up seeing because if I was to shut everything off, I, it wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see any of that. Uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of like when you're, when you're on the road and uh, you think to yourself, okay, I wonder how many Jeeps I'm going to see. And lo and behold, the day that you're driving and that you've kind of put that out there, I feel like that's when you end up seeing a lot more Jeeps than you've ever seen before. It's almost like if I'm looking for it, uh, then I end up seeing it pop up a lot more versus not looking for it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense or not. Uh, but I don't know. That's the way that I see it. So I definitely don't think that it's becoming oversaturated. I just think that we have a community of like-minded individuals and we all get it, we all see it, and then the more and more that you see the same type of thing, maybe more things start popping up of the same kind. But in that sense, I don't think I mean, in general, it's a very big community whatsoever. Uh, because if you look at, <laughs> if you ask any family member, at least the ones in my family, uh, how they feel about luxury bags, they're just like, it's just a bag. It's just a bag. Like, calm down. <laughs> I would never really answer that way because I don't see it that way. So I don't know, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe there's something out there that I'm not seeing. Maybe because I'm so into it that I have blinders on and I can't see it because I can definitely understand. Uh, I can see your point of view, how you said that it can be overwhelming to just see how many people have so many, the excess of bags that they have as far as collections go. But it's still, I still think it's a very, very small community in the grand scheme of things when it comes to YouTube or when it comes to Instagram and sharing or even Facebook or what have you. I don't think it's a very, very big community compared to other, comp uh, to other communities that I think are massive but maybe that's what they're saying about us. I have no idea, but I would love to hear your thoughts uh, on what you guys think. Do you think that the luxury or the handbag collecting is becoming oversaturated? And if so, let us know why in the comment section down below. Next question. What are your thoughts on the longevity of it bags? And what are your thoughts on buying a purse that's been around for a while? It's no longer an it bag, but still nice. The Givon Shantagona is just beautiful. It's been around for 10 years now. Is it worth adding something like this to one's collection? All right, so I did bring out the Givon Shantagona so we have a little bit more eye candy. Mine is in the size small. You guys heard me talk about this quite a bit during one of my last videos, the only five bags I really need video. I absolutely, absolutely love this bag. All right, so as far as my thoughts on the longevity of it bags, when it comes to handbags, such as the Givenchy Antigona that you mentioned, the Celine luggage tote 
Wine, the Balenciaga City Bag, the Proenza PS1, and so many others. The fact that these bags are still around today and the fact that you can still end up walking into a boutique today and buy them, I think is absolutely amazing and it speaks volumes for the type of quality and the type of handbag that it is. While people might not be lining up in droves outside of the boutiques to buy these bags anymore, or the fact that people aren't, you know, just completely losing it over seeing them on, uh, on social media or making videos about them or what have you, the fact, once again, that they're still around, they're still being produced today, the fact that they still end up adding details to them, I think is absolutely amazing, and it's a testament to the bag that it is. So I I no longer them I no longer consider them to be it bags I consider them to be timeless I consider them to be classics to these fashion houses and they I'll even go as far as saying they are icons to many of these fashion houses and I think that's I think that's fantastic do I recommend going for an it bag that's no longer popular but it's still a nice handbag absolutely absolutely I mean because there are so many it bags that were really popular in the early 2000s or in the late 1990s or early 19 1990s that rose to fame within seconds and then they fizzled out within three months and you never heard from them again. They were never produced again and they just, they died a quick death. I mean, that's one thing, but the fact that you have many of the ones that I just mentioned, and there are so many others as well, the fact that you have these bags that are still being produced today, the fact that you can walk into the boutique today is just a testament to the quality, the craftsmanship, or just the bag in general and what it means to the fashion world. At least that's the way that I see it. And even though they're, I mean, they still end up introducing new colors and they introduce new details, the fact that they still have the core of what made the bag popular, what made the bag an it bag, what made the bag rise to fame, and the fact that it's still around. I think is absolutely wonderful. It gives me the warm and fuzzies whenever I see any of these types of bags out and about or when I see people buy them on the pre-love market or whatever the case may be, it's new to their collection. I think it's I think it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. To me, it's like it's like a piece of handbag history that you have in your collection that maybe no other handbag has. I absolutely 100% recommend and I do think it's worth getting an it bag that may no longer be popular because I think that their craftsmanship uh, is just, I, I think that the craftsmanship uh, the craftsmanship speaks volumes and that's one of the main reasons why it's still around. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic. What do you think? Do you feel, what are your thoughts on the longevity of it bags? Do you think it's worth adding any type of uh, OG it bags to your collection? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, do you think vintage bags are just a trend and will go out of style in a year or so? Definitely not. Absolutely, positively not, at least in my opinion. I feel like vintage bags will always be a thing. And the only thing is that I think that nowadays, maybe people are being a little bit more vocal as far as going for vintage bags than before. I think social media has also given uh, rise to the to the vintage market, but I think that the vintage market has always, has always been there and will always be there when it comes to, uh, when it comes to bags. Especially if, uh, if there are collections from, from fashion houses now that you're just just not fond of. You're just not feeling any of them. You're just like, ah, maybe they're a little too out there. Maybe I want something that's a little bit more classic. Maybe I want something that's a little bit more understated. Maybe it's not as in your face or things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's why I don't think that vintage bags will ever go away. Uh, if anything, I would also go as far as saying, at least for myself, I think that the older I get, the more of an appreciation I have for vintage bags that maybe wasn't there before. Like maybe if I was in my 18, or if I was my 18, if I was in my 20s, my early 20s, and I saw a bag, I'd be like, oh no, that looks so blah, blah, blah. And nowadays I'm like, yes, it's so different. It's so unique. So I think that for myself, again, I can only speak for myself, uh, the older I get, the more of an appreciation I have for those vintage bags, especially if it's a bag that's been since discontinued or whatever the case may be. So that's why I feel like vintage bags will always, will always, always, always be a thing. And um, I think it's getting even harder to find some vintage bags just because they've become so popular. Uh, again, maybe because of social media has kind of given to the growth of it in general. But um, there's just something about vintage bags 
that new bags just don't have uh, that unique factor to it or just they just they just don't make them like they used to. <laughs> they just don't. And I'm going as far as as far back as like the Whiting and the Whiting and Davis ones that I have with the gold mesh. They're tiny tiny bags and um, I don't really use them, but they are just they're beautiful and I have once again that major appreciation for them that I might not have had when I was younger. So, who knows? Maybe that's the case. Maybe maybe it's all just me. But I would love to know what about you guys? Do you feel that vintage bags or the trend of vintage bags is here to stay or do you think that it will end up going away within a year or two? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, if you go on the pre-love route, what do you look for? What would you settle with? Is the age of a handbag an issue? What would you not buy pre-loved? Oh man, I can honestly do an entire video on this topic. It is awesome. Uh, okay, so if I go on the pre-love route, what do I look for? Savings. Savings is one of the major things that I look for when it comes to the pre-love market. Uh, for me, I don't want to pay over retail and I don't want to pay over, I don't want to pay a premium on the bag either. I know that sometimes that's not the case when it comes to really popular handbags, but even if that was the case, I don't normally look for really popular handbags on the pre-love market. I'm usually looking for something that's either discontinued or something that doesn't end up holding its resale value. I think that going on the pre-love market for, uh, for those types of bags is awesome because you can really end up get, getting some major, major savings. So major, uh, major savings or savings in general are important to me. Um, what would you settle with? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm settling, but more so things that I take into consideration that, um, that I know are either a, uh, that are something that can end up happening to the bag in general. So beauty marks, beauty marks. If a bag has some type of water staining along the bottom, or if it has a type of, um, yeah, if it has any type of beauty mark that could end up happening even if I used it or if it's just normal wear and tear of the bag. That's something that um, that wouldn't deter me from, from going for the bag. Case in point, the Louis Vuitton Petit Noé. When I got that bag, it does have a little bit of yellowing. Now, normally yellowing I'm not too fond of when it comes to handbags, uh, but that one, just because of the material, uh, there is, uh, there's always that chance that the lighter material does end up having that, that little bit of yellowing. So that was something that I was like, okay, I'm totally cool with this. I know that that's something that's gonna happen with the canvas as time goes by, especially if it was in the sun quite a bit with whoever owned it previously. Another thing is that the bottom of the Petit Noé does have quite a bit of a uh, water stains along the bottom. And, um, you know, that's another thing that really doesn't end up bothering me just because that's a beauty mark that I can appreciate. Plus it gives it a little bit more of a, of a story to the bag because no other petite Noe will look like mine. And, uh, things that I, absolutely will not go for are things that end up causing the bag to wear differently or if I end up going for a bag that I can't personally get repaired or I can't get repaired. Case in point, Louis Vuitton, if you do end up getting a bag on the pre-love market that's maybe 10 or 15 years old, uh, there are many things that uh, if it does have a beauty mark or if it ends up wearing a little bit differently, you can always end up taking it into the boutique. They can repair it for you and then the bag is as good as new. But if it does have a type of, uh, of an issue that you can't get fixed, then that's what I'm like, absolutely not. So one of those things would be a uh, cracked canvas on uh, on the Louis Vuitton bags. So if you ever have any type of cracking on the canvas, that's something that they won't end up repairing. So I already know automatically if I see a bag that I really like uh, that does have that cracked canvas, that's absolutely something that I won't end up going for. Another thing that I also take into consideration is, um, is any type of dry leather. So with the dry leather, sometimes you're able to bring them back to life. If you do end up adding a type of moisture, uh, like a, not a moisture, if you end up adding a type of conditioner to the leather, but I personally am not fond of adding any type of conditioners to any of my handbags. I've never done that. Uh, and sometimes the age of a bag, depending upon how much of the dry leather it has, you might not be able to revive it either. Uh, some things I've also seen uh, that a lot of people have had really great success with have been the piping on the Speedies for Louis Vuitton. I know sometimes the piping does end up coming, uh, is, is, is a little bit more exposed. And if that's the case, you can buy the bag at a really great price on the pre-love market. You take it into Louis Vuitton, you pay for the piping or for the, uh, to, to, for it to be replaced and then the bag is once again good as new so i love that so it's i mean it's there's there's so many things that i end up looking for and it really depends on the fashion house that i'm looking for as well 
but uh, if there are beauty marks that add a little bit more character to the bag or also allow me to enjoy the bag a little bit a little bit more freely then I welcome them but if there are beauty marks that end up causing it to wear differently than the way that it should or if I'm not able to fix them then that's where I end up drawing the that that's where I end up drawing the line now as far as the age of a handbag uh, does that deter me absolutely not if anything I also welcome it uh, because the Trevi that uh, that I recently showed you guys as far as what I got for Christmas it's from 2008 and it's in amazing condition. Actually, let me bring it out. As I said, this is from 2008 and it's in amazing, absolutely amazing condition. Uh, and I think it's wonderful when I see a handbag that does have quite a bit of age to it that's still in great condition and I'm also able to get it at a great savings. That's like win, win, win all the way around. Another thing that I also take into consideration is the odor of a bag. Now I know that some odors are a little bit easier to pull than others and there are ways to to remove them but I still think that it depends on the odor like if you have any type of uh, mothball scent to it or like cigarette smoke or cigarette odor I feel like those are a little bit harder to pull and even if you do pull them I don't think it's a hundred percent and you have some type of a lingering scent to it but it really comes down to each and every bag is different because you can't necessarily say that just because this bag has odor all of them end up smelling the same and all of them have the intensity that this bag has. So uh, the only things that I can say for certain that I always look for when it comes to the pre-love market are savings. I absolutely look at savings. I look at if there's any type of wear that would end up causing it to to be used differently or if it's going to cause it to just end up sitting on my shelf because I can no longer enjoy it, those types of things. So it really comes down to a case by case scenario with each bag and in every different fashion house as well, because I don't think I've gone through the same process with each bag. I look, I look at them a little bit differently. The only thing, as I said before, that I always look at is the price point and I do want some type of savings. But I would love to hear your guys' uh, opinions when it comes to the pre-love market. When you are shopping on uh, on that, on any type of those sites, what do you look for? What is important to you? What are some things that are a deal breaker for you? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, if you could have any bag from any brand, no matter the price tag, which one would you get and why? Hands down, I would go for a Chanel Classic Flap completely covered in crystals from the boutique. That is my ultimate bag. That is my dream bag. That is my end all be all, top of the list will it ever happen probably not type of bag. I think that they are absolutely stunning, stunning. And I remember when I went to go pick up my jumbo at the boutique, they actually had two, um, they had two classic flaps that were completely covered in crystals and they were just beyond beautiful. I mean, the, the attention to detail, the craftsmanship, the way that they sparkled was just unlike anything I have ever seen before. And I think that the price tag at the time, uh, I want to say they were either 12,000 or 13,000. So I can only imagine how much more expensive they would be nowadays, especially with all the price increases and whatnot. I would imagine that the price point for those types of bags now at the boutique has got to be like eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000, right? I just, that's, that's insane. But I mean, I remember when I saw those bags, I was drooling from my mouth, from my eyes. I was just in awe. I, I just, my jaw literally hit the floor and I was, I was just mesmerized by how beautiful they were. Uh, so I knew <laughs> that would be like my, that would be my ultimate bag. Um, but yeah, eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars that is, whew, <laughs> that is gnarly. And if, I mean, there's a part of me that's like, I don't know if I could ever go through with it. Like if I had all the money in the world, could I really go through with buying a bag with that type of price point? Uh, Cause it makes me nervous, right? But at the same time, if I did have all the money in the world, let's be honest, I would, I would probably end up getting two of them. Like if I had money to burn, if I won the lottery and you know everything else was taken care of and what have you, and I had that money just kind of burning a hole in my pocket, then I would end up going for two of them. One, to keep on my shelf, um, so that way I could just keep it there untouched and it could sit like the piece of art that it is. And the other one, so I can end up using it and 
just enjoy it and not have to worry about it type of thing. <laughs> That's what I would end up doing. And uh, I actually do have a specific color in mind that I would end up going for. Uh, I would want uh, the bag to be a lighter bag. So either um, a white or a silver. Uh, I might even go for like a baby pink. But the crystals would have to be AB or iridescent. Uh, or they would have to be the clear crystals, kind of like the one that the Prada has. So that way it could really end up just capturing all the prism just beautifully. Uh, so that's what I would end up going for. And I know I can go through a third party and have a bag strossed out, but at the same time, what I would really want is to have that warranty from Chanel, if you will. That way, if something were to happen, I can just send it back. Um, I say that very loosely because that's a different topic. We won't get into that, but um, yeah, I would absolutely go for a classic flap completely covered in crystals from Chanel because they are just, I mean, they're just, that's it. <laughs> that That's it. Like I would call game right then and there because they are just beyond, beyond beautiful. But what about you guys? If money was no issue, if you could have any bag in the entire world right here, right now, what bag would you go for? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. Do you consider adding any Fendi in your collection? If yes, what would it be? And please opinion on the mini baguette. I'm considering getting it, but torn between the classic canvas and the leather one since their price is just the same. Um, all right, so yes, I have uh, thought about adding another Fendi to my collection since I no longer have the Mama Baguette and you guys know how much I love that bag. Uh, and the bag that I'm actually looking at uh, adding from that fashion house would be a baguette, but it would be in the regular size. And uh, I'm looking at either the red or the white, no surprise surprise there, right? Uh, I just think that the baguette is such a beautiful bag. I've always had a thing for it, whether it was the vintage version or the new revamped version. I think that they are both incredibly beautiful. And with the new version, I really like the fact that it does have two different, um, two different straps. So you can take it off and put it on your shoulder, or you can just hand carry it or use it on the crook of your arm, uh, which I like that as well. But I really love the shape. I love the style and the Napa leather that the, the baguette has is just incredibly beautiful. It's so soft. It's so supple. Uh, I've also heard a lot of people say that it's very durable. I've heard other people say that it's not as durable and it does tend to slouch. So I also want to throw that out there. So if any of you guys do have the baguette, regardless of the size and the leather, let us know uh, how you find uh, how you find the wear and tear on it. Now, as far as the mini size between the canvas and the leather version, I don't think that you can go wrong with either. I love the uh, the canvas version just because it's, I mean, I have a thing for Logo Mania. I, I, love, I love the way that it looks. And on the mini size, I don't feel that the Fs are too, I don't think that they're too big. Uh, I think it looks great. And then uh, the mini in the uh, in the leather version, I think is beautiful as well. Now, in this case, since both bags are the same price, it really comes down to the type of look that you want to go for. If you want something that maybe attracts a little bit more attention, something that's a little bit louder, or something that's a little bit more casual, then I would end up going for the canvas version. If you want something that's a little bit more inconspicuous, something that doesn't attract as much attention, and, so, and also something that you can dress up and dress down, I would end up going for the leather version. Yes, the leather version does end up having those giant Fs that are embossed on the leather, but I still don't think it's as noticeable. It's not as in your face as the canvas is. Uh, but don't get me wrong. I am a huge, huge fan of the Logomania. I'm a huge fan of the Fs on the canvas. Uh, there's just something about it and there's something that I will always appreciate about it. And maybe because it is a little bit more casual, I do have that major appreciation for it. Uh, and to be completely honest with you, I would probably end up going for both. If I could, I would end up going for both the leather and the canvas version. Again, because I am that big of a fan. And the mini size is such a great size because it's not too, too small. It's not too big. It still has quite a bit of function and the fact that you can end up incorporating it into your wardrobe and you can use it various ways, I think is wonderful as well. Uh, so again, it really comes down to the look of, um, or the look that you end up preferring between the two. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out or not. And I welcome your guys' opinion. If you, if any of you guys do have the baguette in any size or in any material, uh, let us know. How do you find it? Do you like it? Are there some things to look out for? Whatever the case may be, please share with us in the comment section down below. Because even though I, I was pretty much set on the leather version, the more and more that I think about the canvas version and how casual it is, I almost end up seeming to, I almost end up leaning more towards it. So, um, 
you'll be helping us both out because I, I really can't decide anymore. But whatever the case may be, please share uh, what you guys think about this bag on the comment section down below. Next question, are you following the new Sex in the City reboot? There's so many great handbags. I've been eyeing bags from Lovain because of the series. I'm probably butchering that fashion house. I always have a tendency to butcher it, so pay no attention to it. Uh, but am I following the new Sex in the City reboot? I am. I actually started watching it the day that it launched. At this point, I'm pretty much only watching it for the handbags and the fashion. Everything else I've pretty much tuned out. Um, but yeah, the bags, the bags are amazing. I love the variety of fashion houses as well. The colors, they're amazing. And as you mentioned, the uh, the L'Enfant ones, uh, the cat bag is just beautiful. And I know that Mel Soldera actually has, I think she has a teal one with the, the, the cat bag and they are beautiful. On the show, I believe that Seema has the pencil cat bag and they are just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I know Charlotte has, I think I've seen three or four Louis Vuitton capucines on her. Charlotte, or not Charlotte, uh, Miranda seems to favor uh, Fendi as well as I saw uh, quite a few Luebes on her as well. Um, and yeah, I just, I absolutely love the, do you guys see who's with me right here? <laughs> I love the variety that I'm seeing. Uh, they are, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I too am looking at that cat bag. I was actually looking at it when Mel uh, shared it on her channel and I love the detail. Not to mention that that fashion house, the Lanvin, uh, fashion house has been a, is the third oldest fashion house uh, in France. So that's uh, it has a ton of history and it's known for many things besides just handbags. So I absolutely love that. Can we discuss the Sex and the City reboot for just a second? I know that this is something that we don't normally talk about on my channel, but I just really want to get your guys' opinion on something. Uh, and if you guys don't want to hear about the Sex and the City reboot, or if you don't want to hear any spoilers because I really don't want to be that person. Um, I will put a timestamp on the description box below so that way you can uh, skip ahead to the next question. All right, so the Sex and the City reboot. Um, I mean, I, I love Sex and the City. I watched the, uh, I watched the show a million times. I know every episode like the back of my hand. I have the DVDs. I watch the movies, although I will admit I'm not crazy about the movies. Uh, but I am like 100% invested. Like I know what's going on. And I was really stoked about the, the series uh, or the new reboot. Of course, I wasn't as excited because Kim Cattrall was one of my favorite uh, was one of my favorite uh, people on that on the show. She had like the best character in my opinion. Uh, but anywho, I digress. So as I said earlier, I've kind of like I've kind of just tuned out what's going on with the show and I'm only watching it for the fashion because of what happened in the first episode. And I felt like it really left a bad taste in my mouth. Maybe that's why. Uh, but the whole thing between Big and Carrie. I mean, when you have the love of your life literally dying right before you, sitting on a bathroom floor, I can't remember if he was gripping his chest or not, but when you have him dying beho before your eyes, and you sit there like an idiot not doing anything, that drove me crazy. I was like, dude, call 911, go over to him. Like, what are you doing? You're just staring at him. I felt, I felt like I was screaming at the TV, and normally I'm not that person. I promise you, I'm not that type of person, but I was like, what the hell is wrong with her? I was so, like, irritated. And then later on, uh, the director said that, it was supposed to be slowed down. It was only supposed to be a couple of seconds. But still, I'm like, dude, if the love of my life was dying right before my eyes, I would try everything with the fiber of my being to help them. I would be at their sides. I'd do CPU. I would do anything, absolutely everything, not sit there and just stare at them, you know? So I was, I was like, oh my God, she's so, <laughs> I was like, she's so selfish. I've never really been the biggest Carrie fan either. Uh, but yeah, I was like, Ooh, it just drove me up the wall. So it kind of left already a bad taste in my mouth, you know, just because you, I mean, the whole series is pretty much on this love of her life big, right? And it, I, I don't know. I was, I mean, I guess to each their own, right? Everyone would do something different, but I was, I was yelling at the TV. <laughs> I tried telling uh, the hubs about it and he's like, what? Like, babe, it's just drama. It's a show. I'm like, I know, I know it's a show, but uh. 
<laughs> I don't know, but for those of you that watched it, what do you think? Let me, let me know your comments uh, down below because I felt like I felt like everyone, um, at least some of the people that I was talking to on Instagram, they were like, yes, yes, what is wrong with her? Uh, we're kind of feeling the same thing. But either way, I would love to hear your guys' opinion on... Um, on that first episode and what happened. And also, I would love to hear your opinions as far as the fashion and the handbags that we're seeing on the reboot as well. Next question, how do you know it's time to part with a bag and not regret it later? I have a few I'm struggling with, so I love your advice. All right, so when it comes to parting with a handbag, it can be so difficult, and the last thing any of us want to experience is any type of seller's remorse, right? Uh, for me personally, I do have a system in place, and I really think that because of that system, I have been very fortunate in the sense that I've never experienced any type of seller's remorse. So the process for me is, one, I look at the bag that I'm, that I'm thinking about selling or the bag that's on the chopping block, and I ask, how long has it been since I've used this bag? Has it been six months? Has it been a year? Has it been two years? Whatever the case may be. Then I end up making a list. And I know that might seem a little bit silly, but I do make a list of the pros and cons. And I and I try to be a, as honest as I possibly can. I try not to have any type of sentimental value or the way that it looks to cloud my judgment. I strictly try to focus on only the good and the bad. <clears throat> Excuse me of the bag. And last but not least, I also end up taking it out for one last spin. And whenever I do take it out for that last spin, I always feel that it ends up solidifying the pros and cons of the list that I made earlier. And sometimes it ends up making, it kind of magnifies them or in other cases, I end up just kind of thinking, nope, nope, I'm not ready to detach. Because the, if there is a shred, if there is the tiniest bit of doubt in your mind that you don't wanna sell the bag, I wouldn't do it. If there is that doubt, I feel like then that's when the seller's remorse will end up kicking in. It's only when you can completely detach, when you end up using the bag for the last time and you're like, oh yeah, no way, I hate this, I can't stand this, or the, the cons outweigh the pros, then I feel like you can fully, fully detach. But everyone is different. Uh, I know that's the process for me, and as I said before, I've been very fortunate in the sense that I've never experienced any type of seller's remorse, but if, uh, if you do decide to make that list, if you do decide to take it out for one last spin, just ask yourself, okay, how long, is it, how long has it been since I've used this bag? What, I, what do I really love about it? What, do I, what drives me crazy when it comes to this bag? How come I don't use it anymore? You know, and I feel like um, once that happens, once that process happens, I think that it might be a little bit clearer as to whether or not you decide to sell it. Uh, but again, as I said before, if there is a shred of doubt, if even after you do the list and even after you take it out and you're like, okay, I'm ready to sell it. And then you go to pack it up or you go to list it and you still have that doubt, definitely don't go through with it because that means that you still have not, uh, at least in my opinion, I feel like you have not fully detached and there might be a chance that you, you could have some type of sellers, uh, some type of sellers remorse. I'm not saying that you will, but that, that doubt, that tiny shred of doubt might be your gut instinct saying it is not time to let go. And if there's anything that I've learned in the years that I have, uh, that I have, uh, you know, have been buying handbags and selling handbags, it's definitely 100% listen to that gut instinct because I feel like it's, it's just telling you, okay, this is, this doesn't feel right, or this feels right to go ahead and, uh, and sell it. So I don't know if that ends up helping you out, but I would love to hear your guys' process when it comes to selling in bags. Is there something that you end up doing so that way you don't end up experiencing any type of seller's remorse? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. So for the last part of this video, I've been getting a lot of questions about the Chanel Pearl Crush handbag that I talked about last month. Did I keep it? Did I return it? What happened? So I thought I would give you guys a little bit of an update because we are now mid-January and I haven't really discussed it. Uh, all right, so the handbag, uh, first and foremost, I just have to say a huge, huge thank you to so many of you for all of the wonderful advice, all of the wonderful feedback that I got on that should I keep it or not video. It was amazing to see you guys were speaking to my gut instinct. You were speaking to my soul and I heard you loud and clear. All right, so uh, when, after I filmed that video, it was probably a week after I filmed it that I got the call from the the other sales associate from the 
other boutique that they had the that the that the bag had come in, and I thought uh, it was going to be the first week of January that uh, it was going to come in. So it came in a little bit earlier. I was really excited about that, and because of the video that I filmed with the one that had the indentation, I knew that um, I had to return it. So I was stoked. I was like, okay, I'll return this one, and then I'm going to go look at this one. So I returned that other one. It was sad to see, but I was like, okay, I, I just knew it. After I after I returned it, it was like this huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders, which further lets me know my gut instinct was kicking in. My gut instinct was like screaming at me at the top of my lungs. Uh, yeah, you did the right thing. So I feel like if you return a bag and you feel that weight just lift off you, lift off you, then that that has to be that has to mean something, right? Uh, so, anyways, I went to the other boutique. They had it there, and it was it was awesome. It was amazing. It didn't have the gnarly indentation on the front flap by any means whatsoever. Uh, it still had the wrinkling and it had some indentations on the back and on the sides. But as you guys uh, heard me talk about in the last video, um, that didn't bother me. If uh, if that's the way that it was supposed to be, that's the way that it was supposed to be. And it, that, that doesn't bother me whatsoever. It was that indentation in the front that was driving me nuts. And this new one didn't have it. So I was, I was stoked. I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. That's it. It, like I lit up like a Christmas tree when I saw the bag. So uh, as she's ringing me up for it, I'm kind of looking at it a little bit more and I saw that there was a scuff on the right side of the bag. So I pointed it out to her and I said, hey, is there a way that uh, that we can we can get rid of that? She's like, oh yeah, 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 I can use the leather conditioner. I can, I can buff that right out. So I was like, okay, cool. So while I'm sitting at the counter wait, waiting and uh, you know, she brings out the leather conditioner, she starts kind of spraying the bag down. And instead of using a wipe to clean the, the conditioner off, I see her grab the bag and she uses her fingernail to start scratching at the scuff. So you have the you have the the lambskin that's already damp from the from the conditioner and she has her nail mind you she has acrylics on and she starts just scratching at the side of the bag and at that time I'm like oh my god I already know what's gonna happen I, like I felt <laughs> I felt like my my heart just went down to my stomach I was like oh, I know what's happening I know what's happening and it's almost like it happened in slow, like slow motion. I could, like, I couldn't even get the words out of my mouth. Uh, so I see her scratching it, and then she goes to use the rag, and she's kind of like buffing it out, and she's really putting some elbow grease on it. And at that, at that moment, like I said before, I already, I already knew what was happening. Uh, she turned the bag over to me. She's like, "Okay, the scuff is completely gone. Yeah, the scuff, the 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 mark that was on there is gone, but now I can just see the raw lambskin. Uh, yes, it's still white, but I'm talking about like you can see just this giant scratch on the side of the bag, and I was like, "Oh my." <laughs> God, no, no, I felt like, I felt like the Wicked Witch of the West at the end when she's all, I'm melting, that's how I felt, I'm like, oh, no, because now it just has this, now it has this gnarly scratch on the side of the bag, now, I'm all for the bag getting scratched. That's not the problem, right? Like that's never been the problem. If the bag is scratched before I buy it, I have a problem. If the bag gets scratched after I buy it, I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely okay with that. Like if I got the bag that day, I walked out within five seconds. If I had a giant scratch, I did the scratch. I did it to, you know, I did it to the bag. I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with spending that amount of money on a bag that has this gnarly scratch on the side. So yeah, the scuff was gone, but now the scratch is a lot more intense and you can see just the lambskin is, it's, it's raw from, you know, from, from what happened. So I told her, you know what, I'm, I'm going to change my mind because now it has this giant scratch. And she's like, no, the scratch isn't that big of a deal. It'll just end up drying out. So um, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait. I'll wait till it dries out. And um, we were there for another maybe half an hour. And yeah, it dried, but it still dried. And you can see that giant scratch that it had on it or that giant, you know, the, the rawness of the lambskin. Um, so at that point I was like, yeah, it, it just, it just made it worse. Uh, so she's like, okay, um, I'm just going to go ahead and start the, the refund process. Uh, and she even mentioned that 
uh, if I decided to get it, I can just take it in, I can just take it into the boutique. I'm like, I'm already here. She's like, and you can just send it off so they can uh, see if they can fix it. I'm like, no, no, dude. Like, I'm not going to spend this amount of money on a bag that, that scratch. Maybe I should have just left the scuff that was on there. Uh, but it was just... I don't know, I just chalked it up to, you know what, this bag wasn't meant to be mine. All right, you guys, so that does it for my Q&A video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to give you a little bit more information on the topics that we discussed. I love you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know that the algorithm for YouTube is a little bit funky, so please give it a huge thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.